something you may not know about me is the fact that I absolutely love music. And I'm not talking about just one type of music, I'm talking all kinds of music. It's very rare that a song will come on the radio that I've never heard before. So naturally, being such a music addict, I literally have music playing everywhere I go. And it wouldn't surprise me if you passed me on the highway and I was in my vehicle doing some sort of mini concert. And I'm sorry if you've had to see that. Now, I think one of my favorite songs has to do with love. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about boyfriend-girlfriend love. I'm talking about love, like deep. You know the one thing that we are supposed to have for one another? For as long as we have been walking the earth, love is the one thing that drives and shapes the person we are now, as well as the person we will soon become. Now back to one of my favorite songs. We've all heard the song by the Black Eyed Peas, Where Is The Love? I may not be able to sing it as well as they do, or rap it as well as they do, but I do find myself often wondering the same thing. Seriously, where is the love? Because the world can be so mean. So mean. And the world can certainly be mean to people. Well, people can be mean to people. When the world is calling out for a hero, yeah, it would be nice and really easy to simply turn and find Superman or Captain America or Wonder Woman. But when the world is calling out for a hero like it is today, I think love is who we should be turning to. But where is it? I was driving down the road the other day and passed a man sitting on the side of the road. I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, oh, just another random man on the side of the road probably wanting something. And I just kept going. Then I came up to a stoplight. And of course, there's a huge line of vehicles in front of me. And like always, I was running late. I had somewhere else to be at a certain time and I was pretty much not going to make it there on time. But you know how we get when we're in a hurry? It's like nothing else in the world even matters. That was me. So here I am sitting at a stoplight in Conway, Arkansas. Side note. In case any of you have never gone through Conway, you should know that the lights there last what seemed to be two years. And so here I am sitting in this vehicle, not listening, or listening to music and not giving a care about anything else in the world. When I see that same man that I passed on the road earlier walking down toward the light that I'm stuck at. He gets right up to my vehicle, and for some reason, he decides he's going to stop and look in my passenger window at me. I don't know why, but I had this gut feeling that I should probably look back at him. And so I did. And when I did, I was bombarded with emotion. The despair, hurt, and loneliness in his eyes was almost too much for me to just simply drive away from. And besides, I wasn't going anywhere fast anytime soon. So I reach in my back pocket, pull out my wallet, roll my window down, and extend my hand out the window to hand him some money. I was expecting a homeless man to come up to my hand, grab the money, and take off. But not him. Instead, he just sat there and shook his head. And I said, excuse me, sir, it's not much, but I do hope it helps. He sat there and shook his head for a little longer. Until he finally said, thank you, son, but I'm not out here for the money. Don't get me wrong, the money would definitely help me out, but it helps me out more to know that there's still good-hearted people in this world who aren't afraid to help someone else out. You can only imagine how I felt when he told me this, because here I was just minutes earlier, sitting at this stoplight, listening to my music, not giving a care about anything else out in the world, and then this homeless man is going to come up to my window, I think he's going to ask me for money, but then doesn't. And then goes on to tell me how good of a person I was. I felt awful when he told me that. Finally, the light turns green, and I take off. He simply waves and yells, take care, son. Just like that, I was gone. My mind was racing with thought, and I felt ashamed. Because that day, I didn't have the love. <laughs> I just assumed that I didn't have enough time, I didn't have any time to help someone else out. I want to ask you a question and think to yourself. Where will you be five years from today? Think to yourself about that. Where do you see yourself five very short years from today? Five years may seem like a long time because it seems like a long time to me. I'm just like, man, 
I'm not even close to being 24 years old yet. That's forever away. But is it? Because five years, 260 weeks, 1,825 days, 2,333 minutes, and just like that, five years will go by. Don't get me wrong, a lot can happen in five years. You will be out of high school, some of you may be in college. As for me, hopefully I'll be done with my undergrad degree and I'll be starting on my graduate degree, but we'll see how that goes. Five years is plenty of time to do amazing things. So don't say anymore that you don't have enough time because we have the same amount of hours per day that Helen Keller, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Albert Einstein had. Christopher Columbus discovered a whole new world in five years. Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel in just under five years. And in less than five years, Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, and six other notable plays. If all of this can happen in five years, what's something that we can start doing today? Something that doesn't call for a talented painting hand, a beautiful voice, or a knack for writing. And the best part about this thing is that we don't have to wait and plan anything else out because there's nothing left to plan out. Love. We can all start today loving one another the way we're supposed to, the way we're meant to, and the way we need to be living in a world so broken today. You know, life is too short not to love. Life's too short to be unhappy and cranky. Attitude is a choice, and we create our own world the way we choose to see it. For the next five years, your mind can focus on fear, worry, problems, and negativity. Or it can focus on confidence, opportunity, optimism, and success. You decide. Don't, think, don't let the past hold you back. Yeah, it may be dark and lonely and bumpy and at times rough, but it's not your potential. I like to think of it as yesterday is a canceled check. And the past is certainly not your potential. The next five years is a brand new canvas. So decide right now that you will throw all of the beautiful paint on it that you possibly can. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't just simply go through life, but grow through life. And realize that the journey of life is not about being right or perfect. It's about learning and growing every step of the way. And my friends, we have a lot of stepping left to do. One quote that comes into my mind is it's never too late or too early. Right now, it's a pretty good time. Right now, guys. Right now. Imagine with me that today is your 100th birthday. Your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and probably even your great-great-grandchildren are throwing you a birthday party. A newspaper reporter has came to interview you about your life. What are you going to do when he asks you about the, your regrets, your accomplishments? Or what are you going to do when he looks you square in the face and says, what about the love you had for others? What are you going to be able to tell them then? Today, obviously none of us are 100 years old yet, so we have a fresh start on life. There's nothing out there or nobody telling you to refrain from giving someone confidence, treating them with respect, and giving them hope. You know, guys, we don't know what other people are having to go through every day. Yeah, we know what we as individuals are having to go through, but we have no idea what anyone else is having to face every day. There was this boy, or should I say young man. He seemed to have it all. A nice vehicle, great home life, solid friends, and just in general didn't seem like anything negative could possibly be going on in his life. See, on the outside, you'd have never guessed that this same boy would go home and struggle with self-esteem issues, self-confidence problems, and at times, even depression. For so long, he put on a smile, but never once did he ever feel like smiling. And for so long, he would sometimes laugh at others for their actions and just put on this fake front to where he would seemingly fit in when he probably should have been laughing at himself. How could this even happen? You see, when people would throw harsh words his way, 
He would seem to brush it off and go on like nothing ever happened. But little did everyone else know that he would go home and feel depressed, unimportant, not loved, and worthless. You name it, I'm sure he felt it. So what was he missing? How could this boy who seemed to be happiest be feeling so much negativity and anguish? He realized that holding on to the past was only dragging him down. He realized that he was eventually going to drive himself completely insane if he didn't make a change. And so that day, that boy made that change. He began doing the only thing he was raised up believing in. He began to love himself as well as others, even when others sometimes didn't love him. Forgave himself first, then began forgiving others. So you may be wondering where this boy is today and what he possibly could be doing with this life. But you're looking at it. Hello, I'm Dawson Garrett Duncan from the great town of Bee Branch, Arkansas. I am blessed to have such a forgiving God I love my family. They're amazing. I've got a great team back here who loves me and solid friends who will always have my back. But just like anyone else out in the world, I've got my fair share of enemies. But when faced with the choice to either love or hate, I choose love. So a question I've asked numerous times is, where is the love? And you may, it, it may be a complicated question at first because love can potentially, any, can potentially be anywhere. You may be thinking, well, Dawson, I got this new vehicle last week and it is sweet. I absolutely love my new vehicle. Or you may be thinking, well, I got a new puppy two months ago and I already love this little puppy so much it makes me happy. So that's love, right? Love can be in so many different places and it can be overwhelming as to where you even start to look for it. But I can tell you right now that all you have to do is just look in the mirror. You, in the very back, you're the love. Over here to this side, you're the love. Right here in the front row and all the way to those walls, you're the love. Everyone in here, we are the love that this world is desperately crying out for. Don't be the person sitting in your vehicle, listening to your music, not giving a care about anything else out in the world that you almost forget to see if anybody else needs help. Roll your window down, stick out your hand, because I guarantee you there's somebody there willing to take hold of it. Be that person that goes against the crowd. This is love, Arkansas FFA. I found it, and I know you will too because you are honestly who showed, it, who showed me what it is. Don't be so defined by the past. Don't let it define you. Let go of it. Grow every step of the way and love everyone. Arkansas FFA, when you walk out those doors today, be ready and willing to paint your own canvas.